Zidon Danny, Electro Ninja here, and welcome back to Electro Ninja's Lab. In today's video, we are going to be discussing, oh boy, volume 27 of My Hero Academia, and the beginning of the War Arc. Honestly, the War Arc is one of my favorite arcs in all of My Hero Academia, and that's honestly saying something. Considering the fact that the villain arc is also really freaking good, the fact that this arc is able to go beyond that is honestly a bit frightening. Now, as I've just stated, I have obviously read this, everything that's in this volume already, due to the fact that I read it on Viz, which obviously you can read the every single chapter as it comes out. So that's really helpful. But this volume, it was actually really fun to reread, and it honestly makes me wonder what exactly is it going to be like when I'm watching it for the third and then the fourth time. The fact is that um, the way that I've been doing My Hero Academia recently is first, obviously, I read the manga on Viz, then I read it in the mo uh, with the actual volumes as they come out here in America, and then finally, I watch them as the episodes are airing. And then, the final version is when I re-watch them again in English with my family. And honestly is insane this this specific volume is actually the most insane volume of the entire series as this battle i i don't think that there's going to be a better battle the battle that i'm specifically mentioning is this battle right here that shows off both hawks and twice battling against each other this is an insane battle, but it's not necessarily a battle that you would expect. It is a battle of society, a battle of morals. Twice has been wronged by the society that he lives in and is labeled as a villain. Meanwhile, Hawks, a person who has been absolutely devastated and this has not been shown actually in the actual manga as of yet for volume 27, but let me tell you, when you find out about Hawks' backstory, this volume becomes more insane than I actually would have thought of it. Knowing what exactly happened to Hawks, because they show little bits and pieces that basically he was brought in as a kid and taught how to be a hero, by the government, basically. He is the government's hero. But later down the line, we find out exactly what was going on there, and to find out that Hawks was the son of a villain, that is, that adds so much to this. Because he really does understand where, Do uh, where Twice is coming from, and to an extent, he understands where a lot of the characters are coming from. You can see his desire to not kill this man because he knows that there is still good in him, even though he knows that there has to be uh, that he has to be stopped. He's one of the most dangerous of them all, but luckily he's able to. Uh, he thinks that he might be able to avoid it by talking him down, but in reality he's just delaying the inevitable. Like I said, I love this part, and that's just the ending of this volume. That's not even the beginning. <laughs> the most, For the most part, this volume is focusing more and more on the other characters, um, dealing with all of their chaos throughout as they're going in to actually fight this battle. Seeing bits and pieces of the Doctor, who, by the way, yes, it is Deku's Doctor. I know that some people are still uncertain of that, but yes, 100%, the Doctor 
that is with the League of Villains is Deku's doctor who said that he was born quirkless. And I've been saying it for a while, Deku is not going to be quirkless forever. <laughs> he is going to regain his quirk, hopefully. And yeah, I'm needless to say, I'm really excited to see how that whole volume is actually going to play out. Because it's actually an insane thought to just think about. <sighs> needless to say, I'm really excited to see how exactly they decide to handle the story with Deku going forward. But speaking of which, this volume actually has very little to do with Deku. Only having him show up for a few pictures, the rest of the story is mostly focusing on other characters, mostly heroes and villains, with how each part of them is actually handling it. Seeing Aizawa face off against the Doctor, as well as seeing Mirko and... A whole bunch of actual characters. It's kind of insane. But getting to see how each of them is handling the situation down at the hospital is a ton of fun. And honestly, I'm so excited to see how they actually play out again. <laughs> Even though I've seen this already and read it already, I know that things are going to get insane. But the just seeing the battles the, on both fronts is honestly absolutely amazing. This volume mostly focuses on the battle that's at the hideout, which is where um, Dobby or er, Dobby and Twice are, as well as Toga, because obviously there's very few people actually at the hospital. The only people at the hospital are Shigaraki, the Nomu, and the Doctor. Everyone else is over at that other location. Now, obviously, more stuff is going to be going on at the hospital in the future volumes, but for right now, every most of this battle is actually taking place at the villa, or whatever it's called, where we actually get to see all of the villains basically working together, <laughs> or all of the heroes and villains working together to have this huge battle. And honestly, getting to see all of the different classmates as they work together with the older heroes is honestly amazing getting to see denki as he absorbs the lightning from the other electric hero or the electric villain to basically prevent any more combat from happening with a, an electric based quirk is honestly one of the best parts of the show or best parts of the volume but it's also really interesting to say the least because midnight says something to him where Instead of focusing on where he wants to be, he should focus on who he wants to be with. And that, in that moment, all he can think about is Jiro. Which, just before that, we get to see that Jiro is thinking mostly about him as well. Yes, she knows that, uh, that Tokoyami can handle himself, but she's worried about Denki. Worried to know... Is he going to be okay while he's in that battle? Or is he going to be forced to into a situation that's not good, possibly dying? It scares her. And it scares him to be so far away from them. And the person that he wants to be with more than anyone is Jiro. And it's it's heartwarming, but it's also insane. People are These people are going to fight for their loved ones to make sure that they can have a happy life in the future. And it's honestly amazing. Like I said, I love this arc. It's actually insane getting to see all of this happening. And while I would like to go over the Nomu and stuff, I basically all I want to talk about them is that I actually think that the Nomu actually represent the seven deadly sins, with the five Nomu in this vault that were introduced in this volume being obvious. The, the most notable one is the fact that there's lust and gluttony, but I think you could actually piece them together to actually be perfect. Um, these Nomu are woman, ribby, robot, chubs, and elf. Elf? I don't know how to pronounce that, <laughs> but uh, I think that 
we can actually pinpoint the other two seven deadly sins. The first one is wrath being that of the Nomu that we got to see a, a little while ago that was that fought against Endeavor and is now dead. But the other one, the other one, possibly Sloth, I'm not 100% certain if that's actually what it is. It might be Pride, but the other one is Kurogiri. And not just Kurogiri, but Shirakumo. I'm just saying, it's definitely a possibility and definitely something that people should be thinking about. It's The uh, Seven Deadly Sins is actually quite a big influence for a lot of things, so that's why I specifically mention it. But pretty much that is it for this volume. Obviously, we get to see a little bit more stuff, but I've talked about a lot of this stuff in the past. Not to the same degree, but still a little bit. And honestly, I'm looking forward to actually talking more and more about it as the years go on. But really the only other things to mention is that we get to see some really cool moments where uh, just in the little backgrounds, getting to see more about Todoroki's current suit, uh, getting to see uh, some more stuff about Mirko and so on and so forth, why this one is called One's Justice. Because most of the time these are actually, um, these volumes are actually named after another chapter within the volume. But this one's called One's Justice because the fact that the second One's Justice had just come out over in Japan when this was being released. And honestly, it's kind of insane to say the least. Also, uh, I just have to say that the high-end Nomu variants of the assistance is also really cool to see. But that's pretty much it for this volume. Absolutely, I am so excited to see to read more and more of these volumes as they come out once again. And at the point where I am, where I'm basically rereading these for the second time, and then soon I'll be watching them for the third time and the fourth time, it honestly gets me really excited to see how this will begin. But I would also like to say one last thing. This volume is not happening right away. <laughs> This is going to be in the next season. Season 6 will be the War Arc and possibly the Endeavor Agency Arc. Some people think that it's not going to that the Endeavor Agency Arc is going to be this season, but I honestly believe that it's going to be the Endeavor Agency Arc and finishing strong with the War Arc and getting us prepared for the next arc, the final arc. The Lone Wolf Arc. But anyways, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please make sure to leave a like. Leave your thoughts and theories down in the comments below. If you are going to leave a theory, make sure to say theory review somewhere in your comment. And if you leave it there, then I will make sure to make a video about it in the future. Including one that's coming out soon that's more based off the anime. But don't worry about that right now. <laughs> Um, of course, if you are new or you just haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and ring that notification bell because only about 30% of the people who watch these videos are actually subscribed. And if you actually did, it would be so helpful and help us out with growing a lot more. Anyway, and of course, if you want to support the channels even more, then definitely head down to the description and check out all of our links down there, including our social medias, our other channels, and ways that you can support us financially, including the merch store, which we just got some new merch, so better check that stuff out quickly. And of course, make sure to check out the book, and finally, the Patreon, which a big thank you to our current patron, Sheenie. But anyways, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. I have been Electro Ninja, and I will see you guys next time. But on!